Hi and welcome to cloudbackuping.com. My name is Mauricio Prinzlau and this video is part of my definitive guide to backing up your data. What I'll show you right now is how I use my network attached storage, which is the Synology Disk Station 212 Plus as my own private cloud. In this video, we'll have a look at how I set up my DS212 Plus and how I use it to back up my data, have people send files over the internet to me and how I back up my server. So stay tuned. So as you can see, this is my current setup right now. On the right hand side, I have a Apple time capsule with a one terabyte hard drive. This is my router for my internet connection. And we're going to see how I exactly set this up in a minute. And on the left, is the Synology Disk Station 212 Plus. So let's have a look uh, a little closer at the Synology Disk Station 212 Plus and uh, let's switch the view to the front. As you can see in the front, we have the LED lights that actually indicate the status of the Synology Disk Station. And in the middle, we have um, we have the two hard drives in it. So let's switch the position a little bit to the front that I can also show you that there is also a, a USB um, port where you can uh, just plug in some other external hard drives to expand the capacity of the Disk Station 212 Plus and an SD memory slot where you can just uh, put in your, um, your memory card from a digital camera. So now going uh, to the back of the configuration here, how I set the devices up, you can see that the, at the time capsule, this is the energy court. Uh, the printer I've connected, uh, the LAN cable that is uh, f uh, that gives the time capture internet from my modem, and here is the Apple TV, and the last one is the Synology. As you can see, it is uh, plugged into the LAN port of the Synology and into the LAN port of the time capsule. So this is the the setup basically how how the Synology works, and with this setup. I can access it from anywhere in the world, provided that I have a static IP. But uh, even with a dynamic IP, you can sign up for a uh, service that allows you to have a static IP to be able to access your Synology from everywhere in the world. And now we're going to have a look at how I use the Synology in practice. So stay tuned. Okay, so after looking at the hardware side of the Synology, we're now going to have a look at the software side. And to enter the web interface, we have to type in our IP address or the IP address of the Synology, 10.0.1.7. And then we can access the uh, web interface from within the web browser. And after typing in our credentials, we uh, can access, for example, the control panel. And we already get an idea of the uh, possibilities that the uh, Synology Disk Station gives us. For example, we can uh, create new users and grant them access to folders on our Synology. For example, um, if we uh, have a look at the privileges here of that user, we can see that uh, we have dedicated uh, privileges assigned to that particular user. And we can see to what folders this user has access, for example, to the backup folder or to other folders, but it does not have access to the web to the web folder. So let's exit out of that. But obviously, the web client is not the only way to access your files. Um, another very common way is uh, to enter uh, the folders on your Synology with the file browser. So we can uh, open the finder and say connect to server. And if you type in the server address with the AFP protocol, we can connect to our Synology, we have to type in the user we uh, have uh, assigned rights to. For example, we can use the admin user here, but it could be any user that you created. And now in the next step, we can select which folder we want to mount um, into our file system. So let's say we want to have a look at the backup folder because I want to show you that I use this folder to store uh, files that I no longer need, but that I need a backup of. So these are some projects I've been working on a year ago or something like that, but I really don't need to access them anymore. But I cannot afford to delete it. Because if the client now comes and says, Hey, we had a hard drive failure, uh, do you have those files that you that you sent me that you sent us over, I can say, Hey, of course, I have a backup copy of it. So I don't want to have those files on my main working hard drive, but I cannot afford to delete those files. And of course, I have a backup copy of that files as well in the cloud. So let's head back into the web interface. And if you select the control panel, uh, we can create a new user. For example, let's click on user and uh, 
click on create and uh, create user and here we can just uh, give the user a name let's say you want to create a folder just for your parents and you could name that uh, well for that matter uh, parents and uh, typing in the details and click on next you can choose to send a notification to this email and you can also choose to disallow to change uh, the account password if you want to give a really secure password and want to make sure that the people don't change that to like one two three four five six or something like that so in the next step we will grant this user a privileges um to a particular folder so let's say we want to uh, uh, grant uh, only access to the web folder so we would just select read write, write access to the web folder and uh, select that and disallow all the other uh, folders um, giving a check mark uh, to no access so that way you can make sure that only the web folder can be seen by that user in case this user is going to log in via FTP or via the uh, system also, you can give this user a quota. So let's say we want our parents to upload a maximum of 15 gigabyte to not clutter our hard drive. And also, obviously, you can select which protocol is active for those users. You could say, hey, I want them to have only access to FTP or FTP shouldn't available. And uh, this, is the, this is the main setup here, basically. And uh, after clicking on next, you can check the properties you gave those users. And after clicking on apply, this user is being created and an email is sent to this particular user. And now if this particular user is on the same network as you are, uh, you can access uh, the folder or the user can access the folder from within the web interface uh, with the IP address of the disk station or go into the finder and select go and connect to server and using the AFP protocol and the IP address of the Synology to connect to the Synology and to connect to the folder. So let's pro try that out, parents and the password and connect. And there we are directly forwarded to the web folder and this user is not able to see other folders on the Synology or access other folders for that matter. So even if the user goes back, it only sees the, uh, the web folder and that is the beauty of it. Obviously, you not always are in your local area network to, to access the Synology disk station. And in order to be able to access it from anywhere, you need a DDNS support, which will uh, give you access from all over uh, the place where you have internet available. So we would have to enable the DDNS support. And Synology uh, has a free DDNS support that you can register with after purchasing the... Um, the disk station or you can select from other services uh, from from this list here uh, for example no IP is a uh, service where you can uh, get a an IP address here so let's just uh, check out their website no IP.com we're not going to register now if for for that service because this would uh, be a uh, too long of a video here so you can register your own uh, IP address here for free and then type those details that you have into your Synology disk station to map the IP uh, and always uh, be able to access your Synology from a fixed URL. The advantage is that instead of typing in your dynamic IP address all the time and changing it and, and having to memorize it all, all, all the time, you can just type in your... Um, your URL that you registered with the DDNS service and access it from anywhere in the world. But before you can do that, we have to um, enable port forwarding in our router. Um, this sounds a little more complicated than it actually is. Um, I will do this right now with uh, my time capsule here because I'm accessing the internet with the time capsule and use that as a router. But um, every model is different and there are hundreds of different router models uh, available and the Synology has also a setup wizard that guides you through the the major models and the most important models and sets the full port forwarding up uh, automatically but here we are just going to do it manually accessing the airport utility and as you can see uh, we can uh, select the time capsule and edit it and we have to switch to the network tab of the airport utility and enable the net port mapping protocol so we have to uh, 
enable another uh, another uh, port mapping service and we can call that disk station for example and we have to enable the public tcp port of 5000 we have to type in the private ip address that uh, the utility uh, the uh, disk station gets and the private tcp port of 5000 so when you've set up uh, this information you click on apply and if you want to enable the ftp access as well um, you do the same thing with the port 21 for the FTP access. And after confirming that, we are able to access our disk station from wherever we are in the world. The next thing we're gonna have a look at is how to create a syncing service, an own private cloud syncing service with our Synology disk station. And actually, while I was recording the video, I actually wanted to use it for the Windows PC, but then a couple of days ago, Synology came out with the uh, Mac version of the cloud station, as they call their service for synchronization purposes. So we are going to have a look at that service for the Mac, and I'm happy to present it to you right now. So as you can see, CloudStation is already installed on our Synology, but first let's have a look at the package center where we can have a look at other available packages for the Synology disk station, and you already get an idea of how flexible and, and, and the possibility that you have with Synology. You can create a mail server, you can uh, create a surveillance station, there are really endless customizations possible here. So we installed in, in this case, and for this uh, video, we installed the cloud station and you have to install the cloud station uh, on your Synology right here and also on your Mac or Windows PC. When the cloud station is successfully installed, you can see the typical icons that you find at the uh, at the finder bar, and this indicates that there is actually uh, the cloud station folder installed. It creates a new folder such as the Google Drive or Dropbox, and it works pretty much in the same way. So there is no rethinking or or reengineering uh, necessary to really get used to that service. Um, it is still a sort of a sort of a beta status for the Mac, and I would currently not recommend it using it for using it for important uh, files and uh, so be be just be aware of that that it is still that there possibly might be some uh, bugs here but you can see it, it it has the same symbols as Dropbox so you see the okay check mark and the the little arrows that indicate that still files are being synchronized and uh, now we're going to have a look at how that looks in practice. So I am now connecting to my MacBook Pro here and I will enable the screen sharing just for you to visualize uh, how fast or how slow, depending on how the, the outcome is here, uh, the synchronization speed is. So um, this is now my MacBook Pro and uh, you can see I already installed the cloud station and I will now drop a folder into well first let me shrink down the uh, the window here a little bit you don't need to really see what is happening there it's just for for demonstration purposes so i will now select a folder and copy that from well i'm just here in my dropbox folder so i will just copy a folder from my dropbox and paste it into the uh, cloud station folder here so let's have a look at what folder i might be copying yeah i could use the um the university folder here. So command C, I will just copy that quickly. And after copying the folder, I switch to the cloud station folder and I paste the folder I just copied with command V. And now let's see what happens. You can already see that there the university folder appeared on my iMac. So this is working pretty well. I have the feeling that the um, Cloud Station, the Synology is a little slower in, synchron in synchronizing my files than Dropbox is, but uh, I've tested those uh, files a little bit and everything works fine, even when I'm not in the same local area network right now. So and you can monitor the um, the, the, the process um, at the right hand corner right now where you can see the speed where uh, it is actually transferring the files, uploading and downloading the files from my uh, Synology and uh, or from my MacBook to the Synology and then transferring them back onto my iMac. So uh, the synchronization works pretty well and I am really happy that I can now rely or that I don't have to rely on a uh, third party 
a synchronization service anymore that I have control over my data. But obviously, I will make sure that I that I have a, a complete backup of uh, those files as well in the cloud, just to be protected uh, against <clears throat> calamities uh, here at my house, for example, house fires or or other things. So the last thing I wanted to show you is how I back up my servers with the Synology Disk Station. Actually, it's not with the Synology, but uh, it is with uh, the Plesk Parallels panel. I'm using a German web hosting company called Host Europe, which, by the way, I highly recommend. And in the Plesk Parallels panel, um, I can set up backup tasks. And they have something that is called the... Uh, backup manager and within the backup manager uh, I can set up my own personal FTP repository and here you can see that I just set up the FTP server that I specified with uh, with Synology and the folder I want the files to back up and then Ples goes um, and backs up every day a whole copy of my servers onto the uh, FTP repository that I specified. So we could go into the Schedule Backup tab and we can activate this tasks and select the schedule and also how many uh, number of backups we want to have in our repository. I set this to three because this is enough for me so it, it saves the last three days of, of server backups that should be fine. So um, let's see how that looks on our FTP server right now, so on our Synology. And I'm going to open uh, the uh, my FTP client here and have a look at the server backup folders. And here we can see the last backups of the last three days. So from May 25th, we have the last backup and that has been successfully uploaded. And if I ever need to reinstall my server, I can just select this file and can restore the files correctly and without any issues. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I could show you what the, the possibilities are that you have with a Synology Disk Station 212 Plus. Obviously, I cannot cover everything in depth in this video because we are now uh, 70, 17 minutes in and it's already quite a long video. But I will prepare more tutorial videos on the Synology, so you should stay tuned if you are interested in this topic and if you're interested in getting a, a, a network attached storage for your files and for your data management. My name is Mauricio Prinzlau for cloudbackuping.com and stay tuned for the next video. Bye-bye.